Hi, I'm Dave, founder of Halloween Year Round, and I'm here talking about the first Omen. No, not the 1976 original, as technically that is the first Omen movie. I'm talking about the 2024 prequel titled The First Omen, which I realize creates a who's on first, but what are we going to do? So uh, for anyone who watched my first reaction video on here on YouTube or anywhere else in social media, um, I wasn't the biggest fan of this movie. I'm actually going to go a step further and say it wasn't good for what it was. Mm. It messed with the continuity of one of the greatest horror movies of all time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold back from this video being an angry rant. That being said... I have some thoughts. Real quick, before we start the video, though, did you know Halloween Year Round now has a Patreon? You can subscribe for as low as $5 a month, and one of the perks you get is every month I do a feature-length commentary with my wife, uh, Jess, who I'm sure you've seen on the channel here before, and it's just us arguing and bickering about movies, and I mean, who doesn't want that? So definitely check that out, and now, on to the first omen. There are two churches. One follows God, and the other follows something else. They've even given it a name. Damien. The First Omen. Alright, so first and foremost, I am not saying this is a bad movie. A bad movie is one that is poorly put together, not very polished. That's not the case with this movie at all. Technically, it is a very well put together movie. I hate using this comparison, but it's the only one I can think of. This is not a Star Wars prequel situation. This is a Star Wars sequel situation where there's a lot I like about technically how the movie is made and it looks great and it, you know, it works, it's creepy, it, it does a lot of things right. My issues are more so with its fundamental themes, story, creative decisions. Real quick, uh, major spoiler alert, probably should have said that earlier, but um, there's no way for me to... I'll hold off the spoilers until a little bit later, so I'll give you a heads up and I'm going to do it in case you want to see the movie first. But we are going to get into that because I can't, I can't discuss it without that. So um, let's start with what I liked about it. And there is a lot to like about the first Omen. Um, first and foremost, the cast is incredible. Uh, you've got Nell Tiger Free, who uh, you may know from uh, Princess Marcella on Game of Thrones. I remember her on the M. Night Shyamalan TV show Servant. Really, really good show on Apple TV+. Plus. Check it out if you haven't. Uh, you've got Ralph Inesin, uh playing Father Brennan, the role that Patrick Troughton played in the original. He's awesome. He captures... You feel like you could be watching Troughton. Like, he, he has that... He's got the accent down. He's got the demeanor down. He's a really talented actor, also a, a, an alumnus from uh, Game of Thrones, and he's in one of my favorite horror movies of all time, The Witch. So really, really liked him. And, I mean, you've got Bill Nye, E, as, you know, this, uh, this archbishop cardinal guy, I forget what he was exactly, um, just playing a very mysterious role who may or may not have an agenda. Um, but... You know, you've got Maggie, our main character. She travels to Rome. Uh, you know, she's going to take her vows. And she's working at this orphanage. And just there's a lot... There's a lot more to it than that. Which, the basic premise, I really like. You know, it's a fish-out-of-water story. Uh, again, Nell Tiger Free, just really solid lead performance. I really, really liked how... Like, she she's bold and she's kind of a rebel... But there's also a vulnerability to her. Like, like she, she's willing to, like, cross lines, but then she's nervous about crossing them. She's not... She's human, and the movie lets her be human. And on the subject of that, I think we as a society, we're, we're used to... I mean, I, I grew up Catholic, and there is kind of a stereotype about, like, nuns just being uptight and mean and, you know... Everyone who went to Catholic school has that story about, like, the, oh, sister so-and-so that was always breaking out the ruler. But what I really liked about this movie is you see Maggie, uh, you know, among all, all the other nuns, and you kind of see nuns just being human and just having fun and just, like, 
you know, one's jumping on a, on a, a, a thing like a trampoline, and they're sitting around, you know, just talking and, and goofing off a little bit, and it was just, it was neat to see a movie portray nuns as just human, and, you know, the type of people that would like to just kind of sit around and, you know, they, they make jokes that border on inappropriate, and it's like, you know, they're human. So that was kind of cool. Um, really, really liked, you know, the the production design, the setting. It's just, it is a very well-paced and creepy atmosphere, um, you know, that, that the movie puts forward. So I really, really liked that. I love the cast, and I love just how this movie is put together. It's very effective. If anything, I like that part so much, I almost wish this wasn't an Omen movie. Which brings me to the inevitable comparison, because I have not said the word immaculate yet. But I cannot talk about the first Omen without at least addressing the uh, Sydney Sweeney in the room. Immaculate. It's eerie how similar the plots are of the first Omen and Immaculate. Now, I'm not saying that one movie ripped off the other one. This is one of those cases that I think you had two movies being made, you know, unaware of each other, at least in the beginning. I know that Immaculate, the, you know, Sydney Sweeney signed on for the script. Or she, at least she auditioned for it in, like, 2014. And then, obviously, the, the first Omen is a, a prequel to, you know, a classic movie that's nearly 50 years old. So... That being said, both involve an American girl traveling to Italy to take her vows, and she's at this abbey where there's something creepy going on, and it involves, shall we say, a forced pregnancy. That being said, I almost feel like it's un it well, it's both fair and it's unfair, because the criticisms are fair, but it's unfair that there's no way I can judge the first Omen without thinking of Immaculate, which I just saw two weeks ago. And I feel like Immaculate does it better. Immaculate goes further. Immaculate, again, it's more original because it's not trying to force a connection to a pre-existing classic. It's more free to do its own thing, whereas the first Omen... It really goes down the, uh, shall we say, prequelitis checklist. And here's where I am going to get into spoilers, so be warned from here on out. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'm about to spoil it. We do the whole thing where, okay, we got to have references, and we got to remind people why they like the original in this new one. Okay, so uh, got to have a, a, a priest die from something sharp coming from above. Opening scene. Check. Okay. Ooh, we got to have like the, it's all for you, Damien, scene involving a long rope. Ooh, let's add fire to make it hot and spicy. Check. Oh, we got to have a character get killed in the road by a vehicular accident where a certain body part of theirs gets severed. We did the head in the original. Let's do the whole body in this one. Check. It's moments like that that this movie is screaming like, hey, remember the omen? Remember why you like the omen? Yes, I do, but that's not why I'm seeing this movie. I want you to do your own thing. The other thing this movie does that just I can't forgive, it's, it's twofold, and ultimately it comes down to number one, the continuity, and number two, just kind of the overall central theme. But let's talk about the continuity first. With any prequel, you know, you, you almost have to... Ideally, you want it to link up to the original in such a way that you can watch the prequel first and then watch the original. And it's one of the reasons why I hate when prequels are like, wink, wink, get it, get it, get this reference. Like in Star Trek Into Darkness, when Benedict Cumberbatch says, my name is Khan. And it's like all dramatic. That name has no meaning to those characters. That's a wink wink to the audience. And this movie does a lot of that. Not just with the character deaths, but even, you know, with Father Brennan saying, but Maggie, do you want to know what your son's name is? Damien! And it's like, okay. 
Is she supposed to be like, oh my god, you put me through all this, made me give birth to the Antichrist, and you named him Damien? That's supposed to be the big shocking, surprising thing? No, that's a way of getting to the audience. Like, get it? Get it? It's Damien. We knew it was Damien. We went to see the first omen. We kind of know that the whole point is that it ends up with Damien being born. Which, in the original, there are numerous references to his mother being a jackal. And uh, clearly, Maggie in this movie, as played by uh, Nell Tiger Free, is not a jackal. She is, in fact, a, uh, a human. Very much a human. And I saw it with my friend Patrick, and he was like, is she going to turn into a jackal? Now, I think they're kind of explaining the jackal thing because in the in the fire that was supposed to kill her at the church, like, there was a jackal in there, and I guess that's the one that, like, impregnated her or something. Um, and I guess they're going to explain away, like, oh, well, that's what they buried in there. But it still messes with the continuity because Father Brennan flat out tells Ambassador Thorne, Gregory Peck's character in the original movie, I was there, Mr. Thorne, the night your son was born. I saw its mother. That line does not mesh well anymore if Damien's mother is no longer a jackal and if Father Brennan wasn't even there when Damien's born. He wasn't present for it. He was, um, you know, he, he even goes later. So, again, major spoilers. Maggie escapes after she gives birth to the Antichrist and, uh, you know, she escapes, I guess, back to the States with her daughter. Surprise, Damien has a twin sister. And Father Brennan's like, they know about you and they're going to come after you. So we're to believe that not that long after that conversation, Father Brennan is now going to Ambassador Thorne and telling him all this. I saw its mother like, yeah, you just did see his mother because you were visiting telling her she should watch her back and she should, you know, <clears throat> take care of Damien's sister who... Again, the only reason she exists at this point is because they're trying to pull a Marvel movie and set up more sequels. You could have very easily ended the movie where they're going to give Damien to the Thorns and trick them at the hospital. But no, it ends a couple years later with Maggie and you know her daughter chilling out in the middle of you know snowy. I'm assuming she's back in Massachusetts where she was from. I don't actually know point is there's no reason to include that unless you were trying to set up another sequel and it's like what why why do we need that the original is such a classic and again i i don't want to keep comparing it to immaculate but immaculate's like hey let's take something omen-esque but do something original with it whereas the first omen is like let's just connect it to the original and let's shove in all these references, even if it doesn't make sense, and even if it breaks the continuity of one of the greatest horror movies of all time. The other major thing I couldn't stand about this movie is the choice to make it... So, in the original, we know that there's, like, this small sect of, of you know, clergy who are involved with, you know, Damien coming into the world. We know Father Brennan was involved... We know Father uh, Spinetto was involved. He's the one that actually talks to Thorn, and, and he's burnt later in the first movie. And uh, you get the sense that like they're working for the devil. And Father Brennan explains here, well, no, actually, they're still working for God. It's just they're so extreme that they want to bring the Antichrist into the world so people will come back to the church. And it's like, it's a really convoluted, dumb plan. And I'm not saying, I'm not like, I'm not one of those, you know, oh, well, Thanos should have just doubled the research. Yes, I understand that that character, his motivation made sense because of the kind of person that he was. Sorry, the kind of titan he was before you come at me in the comments. When it comes to the first Omen, it's just, it's a dumb idea. It's like, oh... So you guys want people to follow the church, so you're willing to bring about the church's greatest enemy 
who will usher in the end of the world. And again, that makes sense if those characters see this as like their solemn duty. But they still act as if they have reverence and worship of Damien and the devil. And you can't have it both ways. Either they are extremist fundamentalists who are like, this is absolutely necessary, but we take no pleasure in bringing the Antichrist in the world, but it must be done and we will do it. Or, hail Damien, hail Satan, all that. And it's like the movie tells us it's the former, but what it shows us in their behavior and the way they act around when Damien's born, and they're like all... It's like the second coming to them. They play the omen music. They play Ave Satane. Again, very well-directed scene. But it's just the, the greater implications. That the more you think about it, the less sense it makes. And the more you realize that Immaculate was the creative, independent movie that took this concept and did something interesting with it. This is the studio cash grab that can't even be bothered to, you know, reconcile its own continuity. So, this movie frustrates me, and it almost, I almost wish the rest of it was terrible, because then I just write it off as, oh, it's just a dumb, bad movie. But it's that, it is so well directed, and it is so well acted, that the director and the actors deserve a better story. Alright. Um, rant over... <laughs> Um, I'm really curious though, guys, what did you think of the first Omen? Am I the only one who feels this way? Because a lot of the discourse I've been seeing is that people really like it. Do you not care about the continuity errors? Am I missing some detail that it does actually all make sense? Let me know in the comments. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. If you don't, you may end up uh, giving birth to the Antichrist and then also having his twin sister that only existed in continuity now and May or may not get a spin-off sequel, and I'm ranting again. And as always, every day is Halloween.